Yeah, well, Tom, the room has just started to fill up over the last 45 minutes or so with supporters and some of the governor's top staff. And I have right here with me the chief, uh, the campaign manager, James Uckmeyer. And James, let's just start with what we know, because there's still a lot of unknowns. But my colleague Garrett Haig, he is at a victory party for former President Trump, because we do know that he has won Iowa. What's your reaction to that? Well, what happened tonight is appalling. The media calling the race for Donald Trump before votes have been cast. I personally spoke uh, in multiple precincts in front of hundreds of voters. And while I'm presenting and delivering the closing argument to Ron De for Ron DeSantis and actually flipping voters, people start getting alerts on their phones saying the race is over before they've even won. Uh, one, one guy said, why, why do we even bother voting if it's already over? That is absurd. That challenges the very tenets of our Republican democracy, and that should not happen. Um, we still expect a good night. I know, you know it's going to take a while for votes to come in, uh, but you can't taint the process like that. Having a, a victory declared before people have even voted, before arguments have been heard, that's not right. And James, look, we've been on this ride. I've covered so many of these campaign stops all across Iowa, New Hampshire, even South Carolina. Uh, just a couple of months ago, the governor was saying he was going to win this state. Now he's been calling himself an underdog. What has happened to, to sort of lower those expectations and now uh, seeing you guys in this fight for second place? Well, look, I mean, he's, he's covered the ground. He's crossed the state. You've had Trump and Haley both working together to spend money attacking him. Um, but nevertheless, he's put in the hard work. He's the true conservative. He's the only person that Trump voters also like and that people that don't want Trump are willing to go to to move forward in a positive direction. And he's somebody that can actually win a Republican primary, unlike Nikki Haley, who draws a lot of support from Democrats and independents. Uh, but what we saw tonight is just unacceptable. You cannot have people being told a race is over when voting hasn't even begun, when arguments are still being made. And the votes are still coming in. We're still waiting for, for those results for second and third place. But if, in fact, because right now you look at the bottom of our screen, they are still neck and neck as these numbers are coming in here. I know uh, the governor has said all day that he is in it for the long haul. But given all of the resources that he's poured into this state, given that he has run, uh, by all accounts, a, a textbook campaign, he should get an A-plus for all of the boxes he's checked here, getting the right endorsements, putting the right staff and people in place here. If he does not come out with a strong finish here, given all of that he's put in, how can he argue viability if he doesn't at least finish in a strong second place here? Well, well, listen, expectations have been really lowered for him. He's been written off for dead so many times, projected to finish in the low teens in many polls. He's going to overperform tonight. He's got a robust operation in South Carolina. He's planning to go there tomorrow and route to New Hampshire, where he has a town hall. Um, so we're in this for the long haul. This is a delegate game. Nobody's going to win this race based on a handful of delegates in Iowa. But what the American people need to understand is there's a greater challenge here. What the media did tonight is wrong. The media does not pick presidents. Polls do not pick presidents. It's the voters. And what happened to the voters tonight was wrong. But James, at the end of the day, if he comes in third here, it's not just whether he wants to stay in for the long haul. There are some practical limitations here. Number one, the money, right? That starts to become a challenge. You've, you've seen how this works we've, with We've campaign. got resources to make it through the early states. We've saved up for that reason. Uh, we're going to be just fine there. we got a long way to go before votes finish coming in tonight. Uh, but I just need people to understand this is a grave concern. This cannot happen in this country. This challenge is the very foundation of our, our democracy to have winners announced before voting. That's something you see in the Middle East, not the United States of America. Yeah, and that's been a big message from your campaign and from the Never Back Down group supporting you guys tonight. I appreciate your time. Uh, hope you enjoy. I, I, think the, I think it was results from some sort of survey or something, not, not even true votes. Well, no, no, no. This, this was projected based on data and science. And, data and science and not actual election results. And we'll have some Both of our experts explain, explain how elections. that was decided and why it was called in the way it was later in the show. But appreciate uh, your insights and, and uh, you being with us here tonight on this busy and uh, important night for everybody. Thank you so much, James. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.